see I can see something that suggests that people are can hear us. I don't know whether to just risk it and start drawing. Should I just start drawing? I'm so sorry, like seven minutes in now. Oh okay. I think I'm just gonna make a start and hope for the best. No comments yet, it's saying, right? And no viewers. <coughs> if anyone is oh, now, we're saying seven viewers. Okay, I'm gonna get started. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so there's, there's always one week every term where pretty much everything goes wrong. You can now see in here, brilliant. Thank, thank you so much. Okay, that was highly stressful and anxiety inducing. <laughs> Something's going on with our internet. Um, and today as well, I forgot to charge my tablet, so I'm going to be working on the image from my phone, which is slightly smaller, um, just because, you know, I'd like to make it even more challenging for myself. Um, Michael's joining us as well today, and we will share some interesting facts and information about the Auroch. I think that's how you say it. But um, basically, I'll give you a bit of a start up whilst my phone comes back to life. Um, the Aurochs survived in central Poland until 1627. So they were an animal that was found in Europe and they were found in Czechoslovakia. Um, they became extinct um, and the, the, I think the last surviving Aurochs died in 1627, which is relatively recent in the scheme of things. It seems, although it was hundreds of years ago, it was still in the scheme of things of animals going extinct, relatively recent. So they were black in colour and they stood 1.8 metres high at the shoulder. So that's six foot. So if you imagine a six foot man standing next to this auric, so there's, his foot is by his foot, and the man's top of the head would come to the top of the shoulder, that gives you an idea of the absolute sheer scale of this animal. So it looks like a, a, a cattle member, so a cow, but absolutely massive. So almost looks like something out of prehistoric times just because of the sheer size of it. So we are going to be drawing landscape. I don't know why my phone's not loading the whole image now. It's just typical, isn't it? I think it's going to be a day of it, isn't it? We're drawing landscape rather than portrait because we've got the um, auroch sort of side on. And I keep calling this one an auroch. Obviously, we didn't have cameras in 1627. Certainly not that would have had the capability to take a photo like this. So this, and I will explain a bit more is a, a newly introduced species that is very, very closely linked to the Uruk. So there is a modern day cattle species now, it back in Czechoslovakia and in other places in Europe, there they have taken, um, oh, they've linked it to the DNA of the Uruk. So it's as close as we can get to an image of an Uruk. So um, I'm gonna start by sketching out the main shape. Um, the tallest part of the auroch is going to be the shoulders. So I'm going to start sort of mm, two thirds into my page. Oh, I see the camera's dropped, isn't it? Lift it up a little bit, that's a bit better. Uh, no, I said that. I changed my mind because <laughs> I wasn't looking at the whole image. So I'm going to start by doing this sort of sloping shape to try and plot out where I want the head, where the horns are going to be where the shoulders are and the legs as well. I may have sketched too big but we'll see. It might be that I crop out some of the image and then it's almost like a I've got a close-up view of his face a bit better. So yeah I think it's I'm gonna not necessarily get everything in this photo on my illustration but that's okay because it enables me to then concentrate on some of the details a bit better as well <coughs> apologies again if I'm coughing again this week this cough has not gone away so that's the basic shape I can sort of now correct things a bit better get the right angles in and some of these other details for example here yeah I've had a day of it this morning like my pencil sharpener wouldn't work <laughs> It seems like a really small, trivial matter, but kind of important when you're doing artwork, <laughs> especially when you need to be online by a certain time. And 
something that's really going to feature in this illustration of the muscles. It's a really impressive looking animal. You can see that it'd be quite strong. You can see some really dark shadows that would represent muscle tone as well. So we're going to try and create that as well. We're going to just enlarge onto the legs so I can see the details and the shape a bit better. my picture crops off so I won't be able to show all of the leg and the hoof it'll just be the tops of the legs he's got this loose bit of skin hanging down from his neck I'm going to try and show that as well so I've got the rough started to get the rough shape now I can go into the face and get a little bit more detail so obviously this is quite an important part of the animal Putting the eye detail in there. Nostril. I want to say muzzle, but it's not really a muzzle, is it? On a cow? Or just to say his mouth. Hmm, I think I've done his eye too high up and too big, so I'm going to adjust that slightly. How are we all doing this morning? Has anybody else got this cold that's going around? I had one, got rid of it, and now I've got another. And this one's just loitering. The colours I'm going to be using today are black, brown and tan, but I've also got like a bluey black because if you colour your picture in just black, it's very difficult to show different tones and it can just look like a very dark moody picture. When you want to get the impression of a black fur, it's always suggested you start with blue undertones. I'm going to try and do that. So I'm just putting these impressive horns in. And if we saw if this image was face on, we'd really get a sense of these horns. They're very wide, wide on their head, like a long horn. So, a couple of, a bit more information about this particular creature. Across past cultures, Uruks symbolised strength and therefore became synonymous with hunting honour. Julius Caesar showed admiration for those who have slain the greatest number of them, saying they deserve great praise, as I mentioned, their extraordinary speed and strength. So they were known throughout the ages as these very impressive creatures, and if you hunted one, it was considered by Julius Caesar, at least, to be fairly impressive. I imagine if you were hunting them for food as well, given the scale of them, they... um fed you for a while. It's the wildest ancestor of what we know as domestic cattle now. So what we know and see in fields with cows, the auric was their wild ancestor. So they weren't domesticated. They lived wild or free roaming. Um, and it was due to habitat limitation as often is the case, isn't it, Michael, when we've been talking about what is threatening the species of an animal. Um, it's often are interference through habitat limitation and hunting so again us hunting them rather than any other animals hunting them um, it's what sealed the fate of this wild bovine as human civilization expanded so as humans started um, taking over and growing in numbers obviously it had a negative impact on a lot of animals um, and it caused the oryx to eventually go extinct in 16, what did I say? 1627. So today, strands of the DNA remain alive 
distributed among a number of ancient cattle breeds that still exist across Europe. A Dutch breeding program has re recreated massive bovines closely related to Europe. So these were once the heaviest land European land mammal. Um, it is believed that they disappeared from what is now the Czech Republic in the 12th or the 13th century. So although they were they were still in Poland until 1627, they actually went extinct from Czechoslovakia before that. But yes, it was 2015, so again, really recent. 2015, um, we uh, a Dutch breeding pro program has, has successfully created an animal very closely linked to the Uruk, and that's probably what we are looking at now. I'm just going to check, because I haven't had any new comments for a while. Is everything still working okay? I'm sure you're just busy sketching at the moment, but I just want to double check because we've had a few problems this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. So if anyone is watching and can just confirm that everything's okay still, that would set my mind at ease. Very laggy today, yeah. My internet's doing an impersonation of me today, I think. Um, I thought it was just my laptop, but even when I went on my phone, it's not good. We live in a bit of a dark spot. Dark spot? Black spot. That's what I meant. Um, and some days are good and some days are not. <coughs> <coughs> Which is quite frustrating. So thank you for bearing with us and sticking it out if it is a bit laggy. If it's annoying you, you can always mute us, to be fair, and just um, reference the, the image. <coughs> you might want to mute me anyway, just because that coffin's annoying. Right, so I'm quite happy with that as an, as an outline. I think that looks like an impressive cattle, at least. So I'm going to go in with some colour. I'm going to start off with the eye. Now, I'm going to make an assumption that the colour of the eye is, eye is brown. Um, most cows tend to have dark brown eyes, so I'm going to see that. Remember, leave some white of the eye and try and leave the reflection of the eye as well. Make it look more realistic. Oh my goodness, I need a new black pencil. Look at that. I can see Michael was already like practically finished, <laughs> and um, he's adding in the grass as well as the background, which is something you can do. Let's see how I go for time. And I'm going to try and be really contrasting with my shades and colour today. So I'm going to be quite in, in a way to try and create show the muscles and the um, the skull structure to make it look really obvious. Remember I said we need the, like a bluey tie. Oh no, my pencil's going to break. <laughs> I sharpened it too much and now the lead's holding on for dear life. Ah! It's gone. All right, let's try again. <laughs> See, it's just going to be one of those days, which means, as it's Monday, it's going to be one of those weeks. Try again not going to beat me today. Uh, I'm constantly looking at my image, I'm not just doing this from memory, to try and get the tone in the right places, make sure I get those defined lines highlighted. I'm going to leave a lot of white space as well to show the, the lighter tones. At the moment, I'm putting that blue tone down first, like I said earlier, and then I'll put black on top of that. And there are some variations in his fur. If you look at his, is it fur or hair on a cow? I'm not sure. 
But you look around his ears and around the back of his neck, you can see that the fur or hair gets longer. So that's like what we've done when we've drawn other animals. Think about that with your pencil strokes to try and recreate longer fur or hair. Um, where you can see those changes in texture. How are we getting on so far? I'm quite pleased, despite the technical issues, I'm quite pleased with how this has started for me. How are you feeling about it, Michael? Yeah, it's gone Yours has gone grey. <laughs> When that's dry, you could add in some darker tones again if you want to. So it's coming together. Good, that's what we like to hear. Oh, I've got achy hand already. Doesn't bode well because I've got a lot more shading to do. Yeah, so I'm not colouring the whole thing black. There's loads of white space on my page still at the moment. And that's going to help me to sort of create that contrast between the dark and light tones. And don't forget as well, I'm using watercolour pencil, so I'll be blending some of that out as well. So the white won't there won't be as much white on the page once I'm done. If I colour in too much at this point, it'll be really difficult to keep some lighter tones. Okay. See some brown tones on the top of his head, so I'm gonna add that around his horns. And Looks like he's got a really deep eyebrow bit going there. Add that in, and some brown tones on his cheek as well. Hmm, and now he's whatever it is, not a muzzle, mouth, his nostril, that whole area. We'll start with the nostril because it's nice and dark, that's easy enough. And then I've got to figure out the colours. It's like a beigey colour. I've got a sandy colour, I'll try that around his nostril. And we use the same sandy colour up on his horn. The shadow is quite important here to get the perspective right so you can see that it's not just a straight horn coming out from the side of his head. It it would come if he was facing on, so if his face was in the middle of the page, his horns would be wide out like that. So this shadow here that I'm putting in. So Gonna work on his ear. Like a sandy colour just on the inside where the light's reflecting through. And then we've got brown on the edges. He's even got a little nick missing from his ears, and we'll put that in there as well. It might have been from where he was tagged or it might have been an injury. Who knows? And then those blue undertones before I put the black on top as well. You like yours, it's cute. It's different from the picture though. Mine looks a bit slimmer than the one in the picture. My one's not eaten as much. <laughs> I think I've not done his jowl bit here low enough, so I might, looking at the picture, I might change that. Might add that in. 
I can look it up. You rushed yours today, didn't you? No, I got <coughs> you gone for a cartoon effect. That was all part of your master plan. Yep. 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 That's what you're saying. How fast already? Oh my goodness. I need to get a wriggle on. It's because we've lost a few minutes yeah. at the beginning. So brown up again. I imagine this is he's probably got brown fur throughout, but this is probably where the sun's reflecting off him. You can see it on the top of his head a bit better. And along his back as well, you can see he's got these brown tones. And fur looks very, very smooth here, like velvety. I keep saying fur, but I don't know if it's hair on a cow. I don't know how. I'll have to Google it. Um, so again, I'm going to try with a pencil to make it look velvety. So you're creating that texture. It's not just about the shape and the colour, but also the texture you're creating. So less obvious pencil lines around here compared to the neck where the fur is longer. I just made it look like fur. Where, where the pencil is really oh, yeah. like wet, it looks quite furry. Because well, it's gone quite expressionistic now. Just stop it there, are you? <coughs> Is anybody else trying with the blue undertones before they put the black on? I would definitely recommend trying that technique if you haven't. You'll be surprised how it works. Have I got enough black pencil to finish this drawing today? I think I need to invest in another one. <laughs> I've overdone it. Can you look up, Michael, if you're finished? Mm -hmm. Does a cow have fur or hair? Because that's just bugging me. <laughs> I need to know. It is really slow today, isn't it? I'm, so, I'm so sorry. If you're just sticking with us, I'm impressed because I know how annoying it is when technology doesn't work quite the way you expect it to. It's hair. Okay, now we know. It's another thing we've learnt, isn't it? So, 
where I was referring to as fur, it's actually hair in a cow. Yeah. And actually, there is a there is a what what's the difference between hair and fur? Um, hair is from mm, Look it up. There's like a sign. It's a to do with the structure of the okay. strands. So, <coughs> look up. What's the difference between fur and hair? Another little learning moment, isn't it? Why do we say that we have hair and a dog and a cat has fur? Hair is usually described as long black or mouth, often wavy or curly, and has longer growth spans too. While fur is described as short hair and fur and has short, short hair growth spans to a longer period of growth spans. There we go. Hopefully you heard all that. So the main difference is that each hair has a longer growth cycle, which means that your hair is growing, but a longer period before it sheds. Whereas Don't you shed fur? well, yeah, we do shed oh, no. hair. But when you think yeah. of your dog or cat, when they shed fur, they seem to do it all year round. Yeah. So a shorter hair cycle, growth cycle, which is quite annoying if you're the one doing the hoovering all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so a cow does not shed as frequently as a domestic cat or dog and fur tends to be denser that's what it said wasn't it <laughs> right I'm not I'm not displeased with that. That's a, that's a good place to be, isn't it? I could carry on. I'm just worried about time. Because I've got to um, obviously add the water as well. So I'm just going to add in a little bit more this way. Make sure I'm happy really to find some of the more of those muscles by putting in those darker shadows. Okay, I'm quite pleased with where that's at the moment, so I'm going to start with my paintbrushes. Um, this is where it all goes wrong. <laughs> so I'm going to start with his eye, so I can maintain that detail. Remember, try and keep the white space so you've got the reflection in the eye, and it just looks, makes him look more alive, more real. And then the, do not load your paintbrush up too much with the water, because then it's really difficult to control the way it moves on your page. And keep, even when you're at this stage, if you're using watercolour, keep making reference to your picture that you're drawing from. Because our memory plays tricks on us. This bit where I go really quiet. I think it, I almost find this a bit um, meditative doing this part. Yeah, I find it really relaxing and satisfying. So I go very quiet and into myself a bit with it. Any art is good for mental well being, isn't it? I think it's. Um, well, so long as everything's going your way. If it's going wrong, it's not so good for your stress levels. Um, helps us to relax and to drown out any background noise because we're just focused on what we're doing.
So though I had that blue undertone, I can't see the colour blue when I mix when I'm blending the colours together now. Clever. So obviously it all look like a cow with a herbivore. Didn't eat meat, didn't have a teeth for that. Because of his size and strength, you know predators were humans hunting him. <laughs> 